to today's vlog. I have less than two months now before I have to play this for this big classical recital uh, at Central Hall in Westminster with the organ there. Uh, if any of you watch James Corden on CBS that's where he's been filming all week so I'll be on that stage playing this with the organist uh, where I do Jazz Vespers tomorrow night as well. So I've got Jazz Vespers tomorrow night and then I've got a clear effectively seven weeks until this recital happens which means I've really got to get on top of it. But one of the things I spend a lot of time talking to students about when they're preparing for exams, and it's the same kind of situation for here, I'm sure you guys might have encountered this, is trying to get the dynamics. You know, there's a mark, or several marks on associated board exams, which are concerned with your dynamic compass. Basically, how well can you play? How softly can you play? How loud can you play? And what's the kind of colour difference in between? And one of the ways that helps me do this, one of my teachers showed me this, one of my classical performance tutors that I had at college, he suggested using colouring pencils to colour in the dynamics and also other sort of suggestions, other areas, ornaments and things like that, so that it visually comes to life a little bit more on the page. And that's what I'm gonna do now for this Scaramouche by Milhout. So the general rule is, anything where you're getting louder, you colour in with a orange pencil. Anything where you're getting quieter requires a nice blue pencil, which I will find here. Now on the whole, I don't colour the notes in unless there's a dramatic dynamic change, and that's really, really important that I really need to say to myself, hey, the dynamics have changed here, Down. make sure you pay attention. The final thing I like to do is just to go through, possibly with a green pen, and go through anything or a green pencil, I should say, go through anything where there's a major tempo change. Particularly Ral's, you know, kind of way we get faster doesn't use pretty self-explanatory. But anywhere a place where we're supposed to slow down, often that gets mix, mixed as well. And when I'm sight reading something, not often, but quite a little now, I will try and impose those colours over the top of the sight reading in my head, so that I'm kind of looking for where the green bits are, where the orange bits, where are the blue bits, because that really, really helps you kind of move things around. I've just missed a very important blue bit there. very good question and I'm answering it briefly here I think the answer I've given him right it might be a better one but he was asking me about why practice classical music when you're playing jazz and it's something that I have asked and would have asked definitely 20 years ago when I considered myself a jazzer and there was no uh, or very few jazz courses in this country 25 years ago when I was heading off to college if you wanted to learn the saxophone you basically had to go to either the Royal Northern or the Royal College and or the Royal Academy and learn classical saxophone and I would have had a bit of an umbrage about that because I was like well I want to be a jazz player and it's only in the last 25 years 
have jazz courses really come around. I mean, the Associated Board didn't launch their jazz exam syllabus uh, until the mid-2000s, or maybe it was early 2000s, but I certainly wasn't able to take it as a student, and I wish I had had the opportunity to do so. The reason I'm doing this classical recital, the reason I practice a lot of classical music, the reason Bramford advised me to play classical music is that, you know, there only really are two genres of music, as the great Leonard Bernstein says. There's great music and there's music. So that's definitely one point. The second point is, you know, music has existed for centuries before method books came along. And so often we get, especially within music education circles, we spend too much time playing exercises out of books when, and getting bored and students are wondering why they're getting bored and teachers are wondering why students are getting bored. And actually what we really need to do is play music. I mean, that's what we do it for. We want to play music. So by practicing great, good or great classical music, you are practicing music rather than playing exercises and turning it into a very old fashioned version of Guitar Hero or whatever else you want to put it. So that's definitely the element. The third element is by playing music, by playing great music, you become a better musician because you're listening to it, because you're interpreting it and because you're not ruling things out. And finally, as a jazz musician, really what I want to be able to do is speak with my own voice. What attracted me to playing jazz was this you can play what you want to a certain extent. You have the realms of self-interpretation. You can put your spin on it, which you can. And that's, you know, it's a mistake to think you can't do that with classical music. In a way, you can do more of it with classical music because you really can interpret it in so many different ways and it's at a much deeper level. But essentially, the, you know, why do I do it? Because it is challenging, because it is difficult and because it's a route outside of the normal jazz vocabulary thing, so that when I'm improvising, when I'm playing jazz, I'm improvising melody. What I want to always do is be able to improvise melodically. And by learning great melody, by practicing great music, I've then got the facility to be able to do that. I mean, you know, also as well, it's a, it's a challenge. It makes me a better saxophone player. And in a way, that's what practice should always do for all of us. We should be getting better. You have to ask yourself, if you're practicing and you're not getting better, then are you practicing the right stuff? And that's why I was so keen to do that book, which is going to happen. We are going to get the jazz practice book. It's not going to be quite the way I wanted it to be. Um, but I'm really, really pleased that Millie, our designer, has been working on them. And I'm going to be giving you a bit more of information about that when I get back from France in a couple of weeks' time. talk about idyllic English country scenes I don't think you can get a better one than this a cricket match taking place outside Audley End House I'll move you around here so you can see a better version of it absolutely stunningly beautiful grounds I haven't had the opportunity to play here yet one day I may do <laughs> My main problem if I was to play here was that I'd probably get myself out by trying to hit the ball into the lake far too often. Oh, and that guy's now out. <laughs> Thank you. 